Hey everyone, this is Vegetarian Zombie. I want to welcome you back to Twine. And in this episode, we're going to be covering choices. And choices are very powerful, especially when working or creating dynamic stories. So how do we create choices in Twine? Well, I'm going to be using a, a nice little picture I found earlier today on Facebook that really illustrates this quite nicely. And I'm guessing if you've been around a bit, you will have seen something very similar. So let's come over to this tab here, and we have a chart. Should you whip it? Now, if some of you are wondering, well, what the heck is this? Well, being a child of the 80s, this very much appeals for me. This is referencing the old song, Whip It. So if you don't know the song, Whip It, check out it on YouTube. It's definitely, it will give you a real big fill of it, the 80s. It's pretty awesome. So we can start in either place. We can start on the left or on the right. So let's just start on the left. So here we're posed a question. Has a problem come along? And we can answer yes or we can answer no. So if we answer no, we come down to this next circle with another question. Has the cream sat out too long? Well, let's say no again. And then is something going wrong? If we say yes, we are then directed over here, you must, and we follow the arrow, whip it. And then we follow the arrow down and we're posed another question. Is it whipped good? And you can say yes or no. Well, if we say no, we'll get crack that whip. So this is how we work with choices when writing, when writing computer programs. And these are what we call conditionals. Basically, we take variables, which you hopefully have watched the last video and have an idea how to create them in Twine, and we pose a question. And this question must always be yes or no, or in computer language, true or false. So we can say, is this person's name Brian? Well, if it's yes, then we can run some certain code that we want to to, for something to do, such as display some text or maybe redirect the user to another passage. Or we can say, is, does this person have, say, 100 gold pieces? Well, then we could display maybe some items that they can buy. Or we can ask questions in the way of such as, does this person have has less than 100 gold pieces? Okay, we may want to put a note there that says, find more gold, and so forth. So we use these conditionals to really custom tailor our stories to be dynamic. So let's see how we can do this using Twine. I'm going to go back to Twine, and this is at twinery.org. I highly suggest you download it. I'm just going to be using it online. Since the last video, I didn't save it, so I had to recreate this. So make sure you always save. We're going to go to use it online, and here we have derelict. So let's open this up. So here's where we last left off. We have our three passages. And if we open to sleep, you can see here we have this passage and we created a variable called hours of sleep and we're setting this variable to a value of eight. We come down here to the sleep passage and then we say you close your lids tight and so forth and the user can keep hitting sleep which creates a loop they'll just keep on hitting the same passage. And each time they hit this passage, we increase the amount of sleep there, they're asleep by one hour. And then we come to close, open your eyes. And this just gives you the passage and this is kind of where our story ends right now. So the way we create our conditionals is using something known as a hook. And I'll be covering hooks later in this video, in this video series, but for now, just keep in mind, it's a hook, but we're not even going to touch that for now. So we're going to come back over here. And let's say we wanted to have one passage read if the person woke up right away. And then we wanted another passage to read if they slept over eight hours. So let's do that right now. The way I'm going to do is I'm going to hit enter down here. And I'm going to hit parentheses, and this should look familiar. And now I'm going to do an if statement. So I'll do if colon, like so. Now I'm going to put in the condition. I'm going to put hours of sleep. And then I'm going to use the word is eight. 
and then I'll put a close parenthesis. So what this is saying is if the hours of sleep is eight, then I want this code to run. And what I'll do is I'll add a little bracket there and now I can put, and that, it doesn't have to be code, it'll entwine, it's mostly text. So now I can put whatever I want. Now if I put a space after here, this space is going to be leading my text. And I'll show you that. So let's just write, I'll just write a quick passage. Okay, I should have wrote these passages early, but what, what can you do? So in here we'll say, your eyes flutter open, giving you vantage to a stream of yellow lights washing over the bulkhead. Okay, so you're seeing some warning lights and so forth, and that's if you slept eight hours. Well, what happens if you slept more than eight hours? We'll have this passage play instead. And again, we'll start with the parentheses, we'll do hours of sleep. And now I'm going to do greater than eight, like so. And now we'll move this passage over here. I should say this text to be clear. So if this is eight, your eyes will flutter open. And if this is greater than eight, so if you've slept more than eight hours, then your eyes crack open. We'll say breaking a seal of gunk welded in place from X hours of sleep. Okay, let's try this out gonna play and let's open our eyes and you can see right away your eye, your eyes flutter open giving you advantage to a stream of yellow lights washing over the bulkhead now you can see we have the space here so if I come back here and open up this passage you'll see it's from this right here so to get rid of that space we're gonna put this right against the bracket like so now let's try the other option Whenever I see this, you hit play, you'll see that notice that's saying it's loaded it in, in another tab. And I immediately assume that there's a compiler error because typically in a programming language, that's what you'll be notified about. So let's go to sleep. Now we're gonna sleep once and twice, and now let's open our eyes. So here we have your eyes crack open, breaking a seal of gunk in place from zero hours of sleep. So evidently we broke our variable here. Hours of sleep, hours as number, that's why. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste this like so. And there we have a very basic if statement. Now if we come back to sleep, the user can keep on hitting sleep over and over and over again. Well we don't really want that. We want the user just to click it maybe three or four times and that's it. After after 12 hours, they're going to wake up and they're going to be groggy. And at this point, you may want to put additional variables to track the user state. But for now, we're just going to remove the option. So let's add an if statement above the sleep. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this above the sleep like so. And I don't think that's going to affect it much, but he'll be, be, make it a little easier. Again, I'm going to use parentheses, and we're going to do if. I'm going to do hours asleep. And we'll do less than 12. And we'll put our bracket, and now we're going to put sleep, like so. Now, you're going to notice something a little funny. And let's close this, and you can see it makes a new passage for us. This is a current bug with the version because you can see we're putting brackets in here. It's just not parsing it correctly. So what I can do here is I can select this and I can delete this. Now this is being notified that there's an error, but there's really not an error. This is exactly how we want it to behave. So hopefully in later versions, this will get fixed. Okay, let's try this out. And to make it just clear, Let's just put, just for our own notice, we'll put you have slept hours of sleep. Hours, like so. And I'm gonna take that, take that out in just a moment. So let's play this. 
and we'll come over here. Let's sleep. You have slept nine hours. You have slept 10 hours. You have slept 11 hours. You have slept 12 hours. And you notice the sleep has gone away. And then we can open our eyes. And now you can see your eyes crack open, breaking a seal of gunk welded in place from 12, 12 hours of sleep. Now, one of the things I learned when writing at a young age is that typically for numbers under, say, 20 or so, we like to spell them out as opposed to writing them as numbers. So it'd be nice to add this in here. And that's another use for the if statement. So let's open this. And now we're going to create another if statement up here. And I'm going to create a, a new variable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my set. I'm going to do set. And I'm going to put hours as number. I'm going to set it to the word eight. And now I'm going to use a whole bunch of if statements to check to see what hour it is. So you can see here, we're doing if hours of sleep is nine, we're gonna add a bracket, and now I'm just gonna put We'll do set, and now we're just gonna set this variable. Now I'm gonna copy this a few times, because in coding, we don't like to type out stuff if we don't have to. Now we can move down here. And instead of using hours of sleep, we can use hours as number. And we could even change it to something else. We could put number as string or number as text to be a little more clear and to make it a little more usable if we wanted to use it throughout our story. So we have that in place. And again, this red is perfectly fine. We'll play. Now let's go to sleep. You've slept nine hours, we'll slept 10 hours. Now let's open our eyes. And you can see your eyes crack open, breaking a seal of gunk welded in place from 10 hours of sleep. So you can see using if statements can even improve the readability of, our, of your story as well.